welcome back to my youtube channel my name is Tolani. if this is your first time here thank you for being here and if you're a return subscriber thank you for returning to watch my video first of all how are you guys doing i'm doing great as you can see i'm doing fabulous today's video is all about my pregnancy journey i'm sharing this video because i know one or two people can relate to it and if you're going through one thing or the other um, this is just more like an inspirational video for anyone watching out there whether you're going through the same thing I went through before and even now I just wanted to share my video today just inspiration it's just something to lift you up because this story <laughs> if I tell you guys I'm just sharing it in case you can learn one or two things from it that's it and also you can relate to it and also in case if you're feeling down you think god is not up there first of all you have to believe in god i believe in god there is nothing god cannot do for you trust me you just have to believe in him you just have to trust in god if you trust in god oh my god i can emphasize this enough if you trust in god trust me everything will work out okay so let's just get into the story let's get right into the story as you can see from the title of this video i've had eight miscarriages in the past and mostly are in my second trimester so i met my husband in 2006 we got married and started living together in 2008 we had our first pregnancy in 2008 it wasn't something that we planned it just happened 10 weeks after, started having spotting, went to the doctor, doctor sent me to the hospital, went to the hospital, did some testing, informed me that it's a miscarriage, advised me to go home with pain meds, went straight home, and everything just happened. That was my first pregnancy in 2008, at 10 weeks. In 2009, we tried again. At 14 weeks, went to the emergency, was advised that we had another miscarriage, the same thing happened, miscarriage gone at 14 weeks. 2010, got pregnant again. It's I know mean, you'll be thinking I'm getting pregnant every year because we just keep trying. So this is the third time now in 2010, got pregnant again. So it's just like as I'm getting pregnant, the number of weeks are increasing. 2010, got pregnant again. It's always started with cramping or spotting. So they're having cramping, they instead of having spotting, Spotting increased. I already know what's, what they're gonna say. Just went straight to the emerge, and this is at uh, 16 weeks. Went straight to the emerge. Advice that you know we're gonna watch you a little bit. They put me in, in a room. Did so many blood tests, whatnot. Started having a little bit of pain every now and then. The right doctor advised me it's gonna be a miscarriage. It looks like with this kind of pain because my pain is like lasting every few minutes and it comes like maybe every 10 minutes I'll have the pain so the doctor say it looks like maybe it's a little bit of contraction whatnot anyways they gave me uh, they told me they would give me something to push out the baby which is I think they gave me oxytocin or something they gave me that meds um, to help me with the to have the miscarriage quicker. I was so much in pain. So they gave me that. My husband was right beside me. Then later, I just noticed something just gushed out. Called the nurse. The nurse came to check. Called the doctor. Doctor confirmed it. It was just a baby that just came out. And I was 16 weeks in 2010. They told me to follow up with my family doctor. Went home. A few weeks later, follow up with the family doctor. So that was a tough pregnancy. At this time, we started to get worried. Why? Because it's a third pregnancy within three years. Then doctor did further testing, advice, they don't know reason why. It could just be one of those things that happen to people. Some people might try one time, it's a good luck, you get pregnant, you have a baby, boom. And some people, it takes a couple of times to get pregnant or it takes a couple of times once you're pregnant to have the baby. So we just see our case as one of those things that it might take us a few times to have a baby since we're able to get pregnant. The doctor told us it's good news that you are able to get pregnant. It's just the pregnancy staying longer. So at this time, doctor advised us just 
the next pregnancy is going to be bed rest just be bed rest so we have that in mind now that our next pregnancy is going to be bed rest as the doctor advised uh, 2011 came we tried again we got pregnant right at 10 weeks went on bed rest everything was fine up until the 16 weeks again <laughs> 16 weeks again even though i was on bed rest i said having spotting the spotting was non-stop then it, it was more of a bleeding and the same thing went to the emergency the same routine basically and every time this happened we go to the doctor or go to the emergency they do blood tests ultrasound blah 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 let us know what's going on anyways we had another miscarriage at 16 weeks again in 2011. So now in 2012, we try again, we got pregnant. As soon as we know that we got pregnant, we went to the doctor, doctor did test and confirmed it. I went straight on bed rest, stopped working and everything was fine. Taking my pre-vitamins, everything was normal. We just take it one day at a time. At this time, we passed 16 weeks. So it was kind of like, oh, thank God, we passed 16 weeks. 20 weeks, everything was fine. We're like, oh, yes, that's good. 20 weeks and maybe four days, I think. I think it's four or three days. I can't remember exactly. Now, I started having pain. That was a scary one. We went to the emergency, did the blood test, ultrasound, the doctor checked. And at this time, the doctor told me, you know what? Um, I can see your cervix is starting to get open, but it's too late to do surclutch. Surclutch is like a stitch into the cervix. This was like, I think it's too late to do a surclutch. In this way, we're going to put you down, head down, and your feet is going to be up. So you're going to be in that position for 24 hours. And hopefully that way, uh, the sac that's kind of bulging out because my cervix is open, that way it can go back in and then the doctor will try and see if they can stitch it so the doctor put me in that position i was there for 24 hours. it was funny i was there for 24 hours if i have to pee i can't get up the nurse will come in put a pan there if i have to do number two the same thing we just have to do number two one time oh anyways let me just i don't want to make this video too long anyways i was there for 24 hours after 24 hours the doctor came back my OB came back, checked, and told me, you know what, it's a little better, but we can try now and see if, if, I, if they can stitch it, so that we can hold up that pregnancy. So, they wheeled me into the theater room, they put me to sleep, and I woke up, I don't know how long, maybe an hour or so, I don't remember exactly how long, I woke up, and when I woke up, I can feel it, that there's something so light inside my tummy i don't know what it was but i know that it's not as heavy as it was and when i woke up i could hear the doctor speaking to my husband even though it wasn't in the room it was outside the room but i can hear her telling my husband i'm so sorry you know while we are trying we accidentally poke uh, while we we're trying to do that because the sack was so bulging out so it was a it was an accident they accidentally poke the sack and the water just came out and in this case it's, it's everything just came out and it was just a miscarriage and i hear that and i just started crying in the room and then the doctor came in and my husband came in and just kind of talked to me and tell me don't worry everything will be fine i was so sad at this time this was 20 weeks pregnancy and here in Canada, 20 weeks pregnancy at a hospital with miscarriage, you have to deal with the body. So the doctor, so at this time, all that was in my head was, oh my God, I just had a miscarriage at 20 weeks. This is like a real baby. We already checked the sex at 19, 20 weeks, which it was a boy. So I was thinking, oh my God, this is a, a, a baby boy, you know? 20 weeks all gone but anyways the same time i was still thinking how are we going to do the body since after 20 weeks we have to take care of the baby it's expensive to do funeral and this is something i didn't even want to go through and at that time i was already in pain we i don't think we are ready for this to be able to you know do all the go through all this burial and all these things and the doctor was like you know what let me see what i can do she went in 
maybe 20 minutes after she came back and she was like you know what don't worry about it it's 20 weeks and up but you know what it's just right by 20 it's not over 20 weeks. it's just a few days over 20 weeks we will take care of the baby so that was kind of nice of her to do and it was just a little bit of relief but the same time I was still in pain anyways we I was discharged the day after went home you know weeks and weeks I didn't go back to work until maybe a month later but weeks and weeks after it you know we got over it but at this time I was just like you know what I don't think I want to try anymore Following up with my family doctor after a family doctor told me, you know, for this to happen, it means you have a weak cervix. So in case if you're going to get pregnant again, we have to do this stitch first uh, while the pregnancy is still very, very early. So that way it can hold that pregnancy up. So that was the agreement because at that time they get diagnosed me with cervical incompetence, which is my cervix is weak. I walk in closet, it could be like it's unknown. Some people just have it, some people don't. Anyways, so now, 2013, we decided to try again. We got pregnant. And the doctor referred me, has considered me, now the doctor has considered me high risk and referred me to a high risk hospital. Not every hospital have a high risk for pregnancy. So she referred me to a hospital that has a high risk pregnancy unit. And I will go in like every week to see a doctor. So 2013, at 10 weeks after seeing a, 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 a OB there, they decided to do a, put a stitch in at 12 weeks. They did this stitch at 12 weeks, which is another pain. <sighs> yeah. Of course, they're going to, you know, give me some anesthetic and all of that, but it's just, it's still another pain. Anyways, they did this. 12 weeks they put a stitch in at 12 weeks and i will still go in every week do ultrasound do blood work do every possible test and follow up with the doctor right after just to make sure everything was going on well and then getting to 21 weeks they noticed that the cervix the stitch was starting to get open again so the doctor advised we're gonna put another stitch in because it started to open up and we don't want that and now you're getting heavier so they decided to so schedule so they schedule another appointment i went in do another stitch which is another pain go through that they put another stitch in and that holds up pretty well and nicely and i'll still go in every week to check up just to make sure it's still holding up well baby is still kicking everything is still good pulses there so every week i'll go in so at 26 weeks i i started having this contraction pain I went in, the doctor, I went to the hospital, the same, they already told me where to come in case anything happened. When, I just went straight to that unit, which is a high risk unit, and tell them what I was feeling. They admitted me, gave me a room, check me. They kept me there for about 24 hours. And then the pain kind of went away and everything was fine. Pulse was there, so they told me everything is fine, just have to take it easy. And I'm, I was already on bed rest at 10 weeks at this time. So they sent me home. I was, we were so happy, thinking, oh, 28, 26 weeks. Thank God. We went home, but we didn't go straight home. We went to my mom's house. And I was just telling my mom, what happened? You know, 26 weeks so far, even though we're scared, everything is fine. As we were talking, I just started seeing water coming out. I just it's like I was peeing and I'm like what is this like not knowing that my water broke but that time I was still thinking I hope it's not my water but then I see my mom and my husband look at each other and I started to panic and my husband was like don't, don't worry calm down let's just go to the hospital and in my head all I'm thinking was I just went to the doubt everything was just fine they just sent me back home the pain just went away what's going on anyways Right away, my husband, we went into the car, drove straight to the hospital. Getting to the hospital, the water was still coming. It was now getting even more, more water was just coming. And as soon as I get to the floor, to the high risk unit, they told me, they checked and they told me, yeah, actually your water broke. And at this time, I'm like, what's gonna happen? Can you just try to save the baby? It's 26 weeks. 
and I know 24 weeks they will try a little bit to save the baby but 28 weeks is when they do acknowledge that 28 weeks is well enough because that's seven months it's well enough to save that baby but this is 26 weeks and a few days and I'm just like you know it's just less than two weeks away can they try and save the baby and it's over 24 weeks so the doctor said they, they would try their best but the funniest thing is at this time I started having contractions because all the water had come out and when the doctor checked the stitch was still holding up pretty nicely my cervix wasn't open the stitch was still in there now the doctor told me because there's a stitch there and I'm having contraction they have to do emergency surgery to take out that stitch because if they don't my cervix can rupture so I didn't want that to happen for future pregnancies so it's not gonna affect me so the doctor told me that so they told me right away we have to take out the, the stitch which is another pain to take out the stitch oh my god you don't you don't want to know you don't want to know so they took me in i was awake when they were taking off the stitch and this time my mom was in there holding my hand it was oh my god when i tell you it was so painful it's like 12 out of 10 that's the amount of pain because they didn't give me any pain medication at this time they were just taking it out as i was awake with already pain contraction so they were just taking it out so the doctor waited before they take it out the doctor waited in between my contraction pain so as soon as the contraction pain was done they already set up they just said okay yeah let's just do it quick now and they just went in and the doctor was just in a hurry and because they put two stitches, it was so tight. So they doctor was just like trying so hard just to take it out before I started having another pain. And because he doesn't want my cervix to rupture. Just, I just want to cut, I don't want this story to be too long. So let me just quickly say as much as I could. So it was successful. He was able to take out the stitch. And as soon as he took out the stitch, then he told me and see if I can push and have this baby. Hopefully they will see if they can try and save the baby. They took me into the theater. All the doctors nurses were in there. They already set up everything, ready to take that baby to the NICU. As soon as we got, before we left, I, I asked him like, no, please, can you do another ultrasound just to make sure this baby is still okay? Because it, at this time, it's been like about 12, 10 hours. The doctor said, okay, the nurse did ultrasound. Pulse was still there, everything was still good. Then they wheeled me into the theater room. And they told me to push it was it only took me one push one push the baby came out all the nurses were ready like they already have all the blankets everything ready as soon as the baby came out the baby had no pulse and they already told me before this that as long as the baby has pulse they will save the baby and that was the reason why i asked them to do ultrasound first and heart rate was fine everything was good once we went into the tear room. But then now, pushing, the baby had no pulse. When the baby had no pulse, they told me, I'm so sorry, there's nothing we can do. The baby had no pulse. But because the baby had no pulse, they can't save the baby. Oh my God, you need to see the amount of cry. I cried. <laughs> it wasn't funny. I cried so much at that time. Anyways, the doctor told them to clean up, take the baby away because, of course, the baby's already dead, which is like a stillborn. So they took the baby away, they cleaned me up, they moved me into the room. And at this time, my husband, my mom were just, you know, trying to talk to me and calm me down, blah, blah, blah. Then at this time, um, a nurse came in and asked me, the baby's body is there, what's my plan? And I have no idea what to do. I've never done this before. And I asked, do I have to get the body? They say yes, because it's way over 20 weeks. <laughs> At this time, it was not funny. Anyways, I said I would get back to her. So the nurse left. So I don't know how this came up. I don't, I don't want to be, I just don't want to make this video too long. My uncle, his friend, somehow, you were able to get a contact of people who do a funeral and when it comes to Muslim way because I'm Muslim you know we don't do funeral home it's just do take the body from the hospital straight to the cemetery right 
so um, they were able to contact it somehow so that was what we did they gave me the number I called I told them I gave them the hospital the information they needed they asked and they said they will come in and pick the baby up and they will go and uh, take the baby to the cemetery and just bury the, the body and when they said that it was a little bit of relief because I know at least that's been taken care of but at the same time I was still in pain so I called the nurse I told the nurse about what what I've just what we decided and so that was the plan and the nurse was like okay so the nurse was fine with that then the nurse asked me before they come in and they already told me when they come in they said they will come in two hours so I told the nurse about they're gonna come in two hours so the nurse was fine and so now the nurse asked me if I want to hold the baby first before they come in and pick the baby and if I need pictures and footprints and whatnot and I say yes yes I do and this time my mom said no 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 we don't do that in our culture the nurse and my mom were going back and forth don't do and I told my mom like mom just stop I'm going through pain at this time I just don't need any headache and I told my mom I decided that I want it I want to see that child. I want to see I want to see I want to hold it anyways they wrapped it. It was a girl when we did the ultrasound. They wrapped her up in a pink blanket with a little hat, so cute. And you know, so they brought the baby to me, and I held the baby for a few minutes. I was just crying. At the same time, I was praying to God, not knowing that when I was praying to God, God was listening to what I was saying. Because I'm telling you, if you think there's no God, ha <laughs> ha. Trust me, there is God. And if you think you've had the worst, no. There's so many people are going through more than what you're going through. And because you're going through something right now, doesn't mean it's going to be like that forever because no condition is permanent. I'm telling you guys, the way everything went right now, I'm just like, thank God. Anyways, going back to my story. So, um, I held the baby, I prayed, I cried. And then I gave the baby back. They took the pictures with footprint and handprints and little cute notes. They put it in an envelope. They gave it to me. And then they came. Uh, those people came. They took the body and they went to bed. And they asked if I want to give it a name. I said no. We don't do that. Like no. There's no need. They took the little baby girl away and go to the cemetery to to bury. And. Uh, they referred me to a psychiatrist and a social worker came tried to talk to me about grieving and all these little little things and it was just i'm just gonna skip it was just a rough time in our family at that time two days after i was discharged we went home and at this time my husband decided you know what especially me i'm like i'm not trying anymore and anything i say my husband is always with me oh that man God bless that man for me. Such a wonderful husband. I know you're watching. I love you. Because you're the best husband anyone could ever ask for. Throughout my pregnancy, my husband is 110% there for me. Throughout. Anyways. So we decided that we're not going to try anymore. This was 2013 that we had a miscarriage. So, we, so he said, yeah, that's fine. He's okay by it. You know, whenever I'm ready, we can do surrogacy or do this. Or if we want to adopt, if we have the money, then we can do that. But anyways, we just kind of left that aside and focus more on our lives. You know, getting a home and doing one thing or the other. Now, so we didn't try again. 2014, nothing. 2015, even though we weren't trying, at the same time, after a year, I wasn't using any protection and following up with the family doctor the family doctor said there's nothing we can do at this time in case if we get pregnant again it's still gonna be the same process we're just teaching they can't really do anything although they, the doctor did advise abdominal stitch but it was just way too complicated because with abdominal stitch it's a, it's just a different process which is a lot and I don't want to go through that so I said no no to abdominal stitch just a cervical cervical stitch is fine anyways so 2014 we didn't even we were just trying to be careful not to get pregnant so 2015 so we didn't even care anymore we just like we're not trying but if it happens it happens at least there's a year in between 2015 we got pregnant 
And when we got pregnant, there was no excitement. We weren't excited, we were scared, we were nervous, we were worried. But at the same time, it is what it is. 10 weeks, as usual, went on bed rest. I went to the doctor, they referred to high risk hospital, goes to appointment every week, still wasn't excited. 20 weeks coming, did ultrasound for gender, it was a girl. And we already know that at this time, we have to make sure we make it to 28 weeks. I was just doing everything, being careful. My husband will cook, although he always clean. My husband does everything in the house, except from cooking. The only thing I do is cooking. And whenever I'm pregnant, my husband do the cooking on top of whatever he's doing, and I still have to go to work. And during this time, my husband was giving her, you don't even understand. I had to sleep in the living room just because I don't want to take the stairs to go upstairs. We were just doing everything possible to make sure that everything was fine with no miscarriage. So it was complete bed rest. He will cook and give me a bath and wear my clothes for me so I don't have to get up. All I just have to do is just eat, lie down, go to the washroom, shower, eat, lie down, go to the washroom, shower. And that was it. Anyways, we made it 20 weeks. Everything was fine, 22, 23. So it's just one day at a time and then one week at a time. And once we get to 26 weeks, it was like a crucial time. We're like, we just want to make sure everything is fine. 26 weeks passed, 27, we're like, thank God, one more week. 28 weeks, oh my God, you need to see the joy in our face. Our hearts were so full. We were so happy that 28 weeks, nothing is shit. Anything happened now. We know the baby will be fine, but at the same time, we know that 30 weeks is more ideal because 28 weeks is 50-50 chances for baby to, you know, survive, but at least they will save the baby, but 30 weeks is better. So 29 weeks, everything was fine. 30 weeks, everything was fine. At this time, we're like, you know what? It's okay. If the baby want to come down, we, we're, we're fine. We can handle it. We can handle it. But thank God, ah, God is so good, God is so wonderful. Everything was fine, I was still going in, 35 weeks. I went for checkup, and my blood pressure was a little bit elevated. So they decided to keep me there um, and watch me, and also watch the baby. And then a few uh, days after, blood pressure wasn't really going down. So they decided that uh, it's better to just have the baby, since it's 36 weeks. At this time it was 36 weeks. so. Uh, and also because the baby's pulse was, um, heart rate was coming down. So they said, you know what, we're just going to do C-section and just have this baby. And I was so ready and 36 weeks is perfect. So we went into there, we had our baby, we did the C-section, we had our first child, our first girl, um, in 2016. And she was so tiny, she was five pounds, not even five points, um, no. 5.0 5 pounds very very tiny but at the same time we're so happy we're so joyful like it was just a happy moment like first time after six miscarriages it's so after six miscarriages god we're so thankful to god it was such a happy moment so and that was our miracle girl and we decided that you know what we have one child we're good enough, no more trying. And we're very happy with one child, even though whether boy or girl, it doesn't really matter. A baby is a baby, a healthy baby. And everything was fine. And a few years down the line, maybe I think when my daughter was three, we can see that she needs a sibling to play with because all our friends have maybe two or three. And every time we get together or go somewhere, they play with their own siblings and she's always like jealous and sometimes she'll say mommy how come i don't have anyone to play with anyway she was bored and we thought about it you know what well, maybe we can give it a try since now that we have a child maybe everything is all gone we just have to go through the same process we went through last time and stay safe and everything should be fine so we decided to try again when she was uh, i think she was four at this time or five anyways we decided to try again in 2020 that was during COVID. So we try again in 2020. At 18 weeks, the same miscarriage happened. And uh, I think that's my daughter. 
paper. Just give me one sec here. Let me quick check. And this. So 18 weeks, we had another miscarriage. Um, it was kind of rough, but at the same time, it is what it is. Moved on. 2021, we try six months later, we try again, which is 2021. At 24 weeks, we had another miscarriage. And that time, it was a little bit tougher because my daughter had known we told she knew about big you know my pregnancy was bigger and she asked mommy what's there and we told her she's old enough to know that you know mommy's pregnant and the baby there so she was aware so when we had the miscarriage we had to tell her there's no more baby there and she was very very sad she was it was really tough for us we were dealing with it and at the same time we can see how sad she was because she was looking forward to it being having a little brother or sister and this baby was a, another girl uh, when we did the ultrasound um so it was it was a little bit sad um it was a little bit sad but you know what we just moved on like you know what we already have a child we already have one so i guess we should be fine Sorry, I'm talking so low because I think my daughter woke up and I just want to do this video quickly and get it over with. So in 2002, which is last last year, uh, January, we got pregnant again. And the same routine, put a stitching at early on, always go to a Harris Center every week for checkup, been off work, stop working right at the beginning, talk to monitor me for every week we check up and boom my daughter came we had our second child which she is sleeping right now and she's just a few months old now so uh, and now our family is complete we have two kids and my daughter first of all she's really happy and this is what i'm saying that if you ever think God is not there watching, God is watching. So whoever is out there thinking, you know, you're going through a rough time and you think you want to give up, please don't give up. If I had given up when I had six miscarriages, I don't think I'll have my first or second daughter. No, I wouldn't. But I didn't give up. I just kept trying. Although I might take a little break because of course my body was going through that phase, you know what I mean? But... I didn't give up. I just kept trying because I know God will. Although there is option for surrogacy and adoption, but at that time I was just thinking, I just need my own child. I just want my own child. I just want my own child. So, uh, my daughter is awake. I need to go get her. Yeah, so I'm so sorry. Um, my daughter woke up, so I had to, which she's right here. I had to go and pick her up because it's just me and her at home. Yeah, so um i think i finished with we have a little girl yeah so we had a little girl uh, she's only a few months old and she's right here and we're so happy and my family just complete now two kids is way more than enough for us i mean if we have money we can adopt another but right now i think we are very happy and contented with what we have we are very happy. This is just a, 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 my story that I'm sharing. I hope one or two people can learn something from it. And also, if you're going through what I went through and it still haven't happened for you and you're still looking unto God for a child, I know God will do it for you. You know why? Because everyone is different. No one is perfect. And everyone has their own time. Like in my, my, like they say, sorry, like they say in my culture, ikaudoba. The proverb that says ikaudoba means our hands are not the same. Like our fingers actually are not the same. And if you see the fingers, I'm sorry if I'm doing this. <laughs> the fingers are not the same. If you see, it's not the same height or length, right? So everyone's timing is different. Your time is different from the next person's time. You can be friends, you can grow up together, but you know what? When things are happening for you, might not be the same time things that happen for the next person. And it might happen for them first, and you thinking, oh, I think God forget about me. Because at this time, we were so 
we were just thinking that was the time that most of my friends were having kids i'm not even i kid you not i kid you not that was the time most of my friends were having kids i have one of my friends which i think she's watching um every pregnancy i've had in the past we got pregnant around the same time and she had those kids and i don't have any i end up having miscarriage but you know what it was her time and god says she's gonna have whatever kids she has right now god says she's gonna have those kids and i was having miscarriage but at the same time i was still happy for her there's so many of my friends that had kids during the time there was one of the pregnancy that i miscarriage that i had i had a miscarriage and at that time we're planning a, a, a surprise um baby shower for one of my friends and i had a miscarriage it was just maybe a week away or so two weeks away I, I still went to the baby shower i still went to the baby shower it was so surprising for some of my friends thinking you just had a miscarriage like what were you doing but you know what i see that it is what it is things happen life goes on I'm not gonna just stay in my shell and just like you know I don't want to do it. no it, things happen everything happens for a reason all I wanted to say is don't give up if I had given up when I was having miscarriages when I had my sixth miscarriage that far long I had to go through burial and all of that and I was six over almost seven months pregnant at that time and I had a miscarriage if I had given up do you think I'll have my first child or my second child no but i didn't give up because i know that i will have my own child i know that it will happen for me it's just not time yet even though i had my first daughter at 33 or 34 but you know i still have my child it doesn't matter whether i'm going to be 30 or 20 or 25 or 30 or 40 i still have my own child jenny jackson she had her first child at 50. you know so it doesn't matter when you know what happened is you want something just don't give up i know god will do it for you god did it for me and god will do it for you i just wanted to say thank you for watching thank you for being here uh i know the story was just too long i, I cut some things out and i tried to say it as quick as quick as i can so i'm sorry for it being too long i tried to cut off some things out just going straight to the point but there's some things that i can't just skip thank you for watching thank you for clicking this video and i hope um this story kind of inspires someone or gives someone a hope when it comes to pregnancy and even if it's not pregnancy even if it's maybe you, there is one job that you've been searching for you've been dreaming for that you really want and you can't get it or there's just something in your heart that you're praying god to give you and god hasn't done it for you yet you know what it's not time yet that's why god hasn't got, given it to you because god knows that the best time is when god decided that he's gonna give you whatever he's gonna give you so if god hasn't done it for you yet don't even worry because when it comes will be the perfect timing when my daughter came was the perfect timing for my family but anyways i talk too much let me just get out of here thank you so much for clicking my video i hope i inspire someone i hope this video lifts someone up i hope you don't give up if you ever have trying for something. I hope God answer all our prayers. Please put a comment in the comment section below. Thank you. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.